thyroid gland is one of the most important glands you know why because it is the largest endocrine gland so thyroid which is the largest endocrine gland is present in the neck area on the either side of the trachea or the windpipe so as you can see here this is the windpipe on the either side of the windpipe there are two lobes and these two lobes are the lobes of thyroid gland connected by a belt which is known as isthmus so isthmus as we know similar isthmus in geography we have the similar isthmus here that connects two uh, two glands here so the thyroid the two lobes are connected through the isthmus and on the each of the thyroid on either side of it we have four green dots as you can see here and these are the parathyroid glands so parathyroid glands are again uh, located on either side of the thyroid gland now thyroid has two important secretions first is thyroxin the most important t3 t4 secretion that we commonly hear and the next is calcitonin so two important secretions i repeat again thyroxin calcitonin very very important now thyroxin what is the major idea it regulates growth it regulates metabolism development and also regulates the basal metabolism that is the cellular oxidation and therefore it acts as a body's thermostat so that is one of the major concepts why thyroxin is very very important and these secretions of thyroxin uh, or thyroid gland are controlled by the master gland of the body which is the master gland of the body you are correct pituitary so pituitary gland controls the secretions of the thyroid gland now coming on to thyroid there can be disorders as we say as we studied in the section on hormones each of these glands if there is more secretion they can lead to disorder if there is less secretion again there can be disorders so what is the disorder when the secretions are more and the when the secretions are less when the secretions are more we say we it leads to exothalamic uh, exo uh, exothalamic goiter so exothalamic goiter exothalamic goiter what is the major characteristic the the most important characteristic is bulging eyes nervous temperament feeling restless about everything higher pulse rate faster heartbeat and faster rate of metabolism in the body so higher respiratory rate is again associated with hypersecretions hypersecretions lead to exothalamic goiter very very important however hyposecretions lead to three important disorders cretinism myoxidemia and simple goiter now what are these three let's understand these one by one cretinism is a uh, a kind of hyposecretion where the growth the physical growth is retarded as you can see in the picture here pot belly pigeon chest uh, deformed teeth are some of the common characteristics of cretinism also shorter height shorter hands and feet uh, delayed physical growth delayed or retarded mental growth are some of the indicators of cretinism so cretinism is a kind of retardation both mental as well as physical retardation pot belly pigeon chest two of the important characteristics of a child suffering from cretinism the next is myoxidema edema as it the name suggests there is water retention so there is swelling now with the swelling usually it is below the eyes so in the periorbital area there is swelling edema the face is much more dry uh, you have a kind of swollen face because there is edema water retention there is so swollen face uh, swelling on the hand swelling on the body uh, waxy skin 
kind of uh, skin where uh, lo uh, it's a kind of uh, puffy skin we can say also there is feeble mindedness and deposition of subcutaneous mucus fluid which leads to edema here so subcutaneous subcutaneous means below the skin so subcutaneous mucus fluid is which is deposited in myoxedema. The next important one is simple goiter. The most common indicator is the swelling in the, uh, in the neck area. Now this is simply because the thyroid glands in the neck gets enlarged as you can see a normal case versus a case of simple goiter and enlargement of the thyroid gland. Now this is mainly due to deficiency of iodine and how it can be fulfilled by use of iodized salt. So iodized salt is the most common way of treating the problem of simple goiter. You might have seen people in hilly areas significantly develop more goiter issues. Why? The people in the hilly areas have uh, iodine deficiency uh, in the water and therefore the salt is deficient in iodine uh, and therefore we have a lack of iodized salt which is used. So one of the major uh, responsible factors for simple goiter in the hilly areas is lack of iodine. So those are three of the important diseases that we have understood because of less secretion of thyroxine which is cretinism, myoxidema and simple goiter. Hyper uh, secretions, more secretions of thyroxine leads to exophthalmic goiter and thyroid as we said is the largest gland of the body Two lobes connected by a isthmus on the four corners you have the parathyroid which is located and again the most important thing that we need to understand is two important hormones thyroxine and calcitonin which are secret, secreted by the thyroid gland. So those are some of the key aspects about thyroid, the secretions and the implications of hyper and hyposecretions.